<laughs> Thank you for joining the Yarn Live show for your daily dose of fiber. Selena Baca here, co-founder of the Yarn Live show. I'm also the founder, host, and lead educator with the American Crochet Association. And I'm Jess Mason, a founder of the Yarnpreneur Society and Academy. Yes, ma'am, you are. And <laughs> together we make the Yarn Life Show. Welcome. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Come on over and get tangled up in this fun, upbeat educational channel that's dedicated to the hanks, the skeins, the balls, and the cake that we love the most, and to the people who make the most of them because yarn is life. Hashtag the story. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Season two, we're into season two. It's going to stream right here live every Thursday at 11 West Coast time to East Coast time. So please subscribe to this channel and you'll never miss an episode. Today's episode is sponsored in part by you awesome people. Check out our Yarn Life swag shop to pick up a token tea, tote, or mug today. Every purchase you make there not only gives you great products you'll love, it also helps us to create more great episodes and bring on more amazing guests. You can find our shop link in the show notes section today, right below this video. Exactly. So today we are into season two. This is episode nine already. So excited. Wow. I know. Uh, and today we've got some awesome tips that are going to help you display and store your yarn stash. Now, yarn is a material that we have to protect from elements like temperature, sunlight, dust, and even pets. I know I have a zoo here, so, and I've got to protect my yarn from my yeah. zoo. Uh, but we also like to display yarn because it's just so darn pretty. So, this is in, true. <laughs> right? I know. So, in this episode, we're going to define the two because storing and display are two completely different things. And we're going to yeah with you some of our favorite tips to help you store or display your yarn like a pro. Awesome. So if you guys are watching live or on the replay, comment on this video to let us know how many, uh, how you display your yarn. Okay. Because everyone kind of does it a little differently. Um, show us how, or tell us how really, I don't know how you would show us, but tell us how you display your yarn. And then uh, that way we can kind of compare notes and ideas. Um, so if you guys are here, say hi. Um, I don't see anyone poking in so far. So I am going to, I think we're going to keep going. Yeah, don't be but shy. I'll check, I'll check back in later. All right. Now, before we dive into those tips, um, let's define first the difference between storing and display. Because we talk about storing and displaying our yarn. Sometimes we do both. Sometimes we just do one or the other. But let's, you know, let's break out our friend Webster and see what, <laughs> see what Webster has to say. So when we look at the basic definition of storing, literally, it's basically to save in a place where it can be available for future use, but kept safely. So that means like, okay, we're not using this right now, but I will use it later. Um, I don't want it to get ruined in any way. I don't want it to get rustled in any way. And yes, we talked about the elements kind of ruining things. And, you know, we all have tips to kind of combat that in a minute. But storing means to put away safely. Now display, on the other hand, that's to show prominently in clear sight where it can be easily seen. So we may display things like knickknacks or you can see like me over here, I display some yarn and that means it's out in the open. I'm looking at it. It's, you know, it's very easily accessible. So as we talk about storing and displaying, those are literally how we're going to define both. Awesome. Yeah. And so when I say that, I do want to say that not all yarn should be displayed out in the open. Um, and you might not be storing all of your yarn in the best possible way. So here we're going to outline some tips that are going to help you decide the best options for your yarn. I think um, storing and displaying are, they can be kind of a nuisance to us sometimes, specifically storing, I think. Yeah. Um, they can kind of get in the way or you feel like you don't want to store it, you want to display all of it, but that's usually not possible considering the size of most of our stashes. Um, so I think for some people, it can be a little bit of kind of a thorn in our side where we're like, oh, I don't want to uh, 
I don't want to store this, you know, I don't want to put it away or, but you're afraid to display it. And so finding that kind of balance is something that I think we're going to hopefully help people with today. Um, I also know that when most of us start, we start with a smaller stash and then it keeps growing and growing and growing. So in the beginning, sometimes it's much easier to store and display than it becomes later on when you have more. Um, so I know we're gonna talk about storage first. Mm -hmm. And since Selena so specifically described our storage, we can know exactly what that means. Um, so storing is great when you need to store a whole unit of yarn, whether it's a hank, a ball, whatever it is, um, and you want to keep it new and fresh. Yeah, yeah. So kind if that's like kind of your, off, you know, yeah, a warehouse of yarn, you can have that yeah. at home. <laughs> you know, you want it to be nice. And some of us do. <laughs> um, yeah, like you want to keep it clean and all that good stuff. Um, we want to keep it out of direct sunlight. Mm -hmm. um, that's a biggie. So yep. that's kind of one. Um, a lot of people really love clear plastic bins with lids. Mm -hmm. um, so it'll keep the dust out, keep any debris out, um, miscellaneous stuff that might fall in if it didn't have a lid on. Um, and it'll keep smells and all that kind of stuff out. So it keeps it nice and contained. Um, just do that. It's wonderful. Yes, they do. Um, some people also get really organized. So containers, clear plastic, plastic bins, especially because you can see through them makes it a little easier for you to organize. Um, and I think a lot of people like to kind of keep the same brand and the same type together. Maybe some people organize by weight. Some people organize by color. Um, some people will organize specifically by brand and then by weight or color. It depends on how like OCD you want to get about this. Um, I tend to get very specific. Um, I am that person that likes to have it all, all like objects together. <laughs> so when you say that, and this is why I really wanted to have this conversation, is how do you store your yarn because I'm very specific about how I store things and compartmentalize them. So I would love to hear what, what you do when you store your yarn. Like do you, how do you compartmentalize it? So my storage system has changed mm -hmm. uh, a lot over the years. Mm -hmm. When I first started, my stash was small enough that I kept it in. I used to have like a little trunk. Uh, it was kind of like a chest kind of thing, which is like a lifting lid. It was a wooden uh, container. Mm -hmm. um, and I would throw both my works in progress and my yarn in there. But it was such a size that I was able to stack like the skeins mm -hmm. um, in a very organized fashion. So I would put, I tended to buy a lot of one color at the same time because I started doing blankets. Um, so like the same brand, different, same, same color? brand, same color. Okay. Same, like I'd buy six games of the same thing. Yes. Um, in maybe like two or three colors. So I had everything organized by brand and then color. And yes. everything was worsted weight when I first started out. Like I didn't have anything else. Yeah. Um, and then I graduated when my stash got bigger to the yarn wall, mm -hmm. um, which some of you, depending on how long uh, you've been with us here at Yarn Life, or maybe you used to follow me at Screen to Stitch, um, have seen pictures of my yarn wall and I loved the yarn wall and that is specifically a display. Yes. So that was not storage. It was very much out in the open. A lot of people ask me all the time, how do you keep them from getting dusty? Um, so there, there was that and they were in uh, cakes. Yep. So I wound them all into cakes. They were on a big giant pegboard um, and that was 100% organized by color alone. Yep. Because it was so visual. Yes. Um, if it was, and that when we talk about OCD, that would drive me nuts if there was like a purple too far into the blues, you know, uh -huh. like they had to kind of, it had to flow. Yeah. But they weren't allowed to overlap too much. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> um, so I spent a lot of time uh, reorganizing that wall every time I would take something down or put something back because it, yeah. it was a lot of work to keep looking nice. Absolutely. Um, 
which is why I actually don't display any of my yarn anymore. Mm -hmm. um, I recently went through and gifted and or donated a lot of my yarn. Mm -hmm. um, so I currently have two plastic tote, uh, you know, containers with lids. Um, mm -hmm. Yes. And they are organized by uh, brand and then color and then weight. Interesting. I, so I know what's in the bottom of the box because <laughs> otherwise you have to do one of these. Yeah, and pull everything out. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think, you know, a, we could totally have a whole other conversation about yarn storage and display. And I think oh, yeah. something that I just realized that we're not mentioning here is that there's so many different types of yarn lovers like there are people that are hobbyists, but maybe they, they have an entire store of yarn. Or there's people that maybe do things with their yarn, like maybe they write patterns or maybe they make things and sell them. And so uh, I think that because there's so many different types of people, I, I love that all of these storage ideas can still make so much sense. Oh, yeah. I mean, I have friends who buy per project. Mm -hmm. So yes. they don't even really have much of a stash. Like they'll have, if they have leftover bits, they have like a bin that they put those in. But mm -hmm. other than that, they're like, okay, I'm going to go make this thing. They go out to the store, they buy the yarn, they make the thing. And like, that's it. Um, those people are rare, rare gems. I don't understand. They do that. exist. That no sense to me. They do exist. <laughs> um, there are some people like that. So yeah, but even for them, you know, they have to have a storage for those leftover pieces or they accidentally bought two skeins too many, you know, so they still, these things do still apply to that. Absolutely. All right. So I derailed you a little bit. So basically just because no. I, de I derailed. So storage ideas, when we talk about storage ideas, we're talking about storing whole units of yarn that should be kept new because you want to save them for later. Right. Just had some great ideas, like keep them out of direct sunlight Clear plastic bins are great to keep smells and dust and debris out. Debris out. Uh, keep it all organized. So uh, it's a great idea to keep the same brand and type together. That way, yeah. if you have a yarn warehouse. You can clearly see where everything is. Um, and then I think this that was is this is my my biggie. Okay, yeah. because we talked about my yarn wall. Yep. And in order to create the yarn wall, I had to wind every skein I owned into a cake. Yep. In so doing, 90% of the labels were removed. Yeah. And me, being the person that I am, not wanting like random miscellaneous crap all over the place, I threw them out. Of course you did. <laughs> um, do not do that. It's a bad idea. Um, if you're storing your yarn, it is. Because storing means you're going to yes. get back to it. You're going to need it. You're going to have to have that information. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I removed the labels. Now, in, in a lot of cases, I, I tend to be very good um, with remembering what they were, um, brand and, you know, yarn line, mm -hmm. um, because I can visually tell the difference between them for most major commercial brands. Once we got down to handmade stuff, it was, uh, or hand wound, hand spun, whatever, like all of those things were very, very hard to tell. So yeah. I did keep the labels for a lot of those. And what I would do is I would twirl them in a little circle and stick them in the middle, in the center of the cake so that they were there, but you know, they weren't like interfering with the look of the wall in any way. Hmm. Um, I do know people who take the labels off and store them in like little coupon bags um, for when they display them. Um, and we're going to talk about, you know, display a little bit more later, but it allows them to still have. Um, I actually know people who will snip a little bit off the end and tape it to the label. Okay. So that they have a sample of the yarn with the label so that they know exactly what is what. And that's the best way that I've kind of heard of, of people coordinating the two without them being, you know, attached to each other anymore. Hmm. Um, storage also is a great way to, you can keep your yarn in one location. I know a lot of us tend to scatter, especially if um, we don't have a dedicated area 
yeah to store our yarn um you know sometimes it winds up under some is under the bed some is in the closet you know some is in the living room where you kind of hang out and and work on your projects um so this kind of depends on what your particular situation is how big your stash is um where you have free space to keep it um i know a lot of people who actually really like under bed solutions yeah because you can get those uh again a clear plastic container um still has a lid you can still see through it all that good stuff and they tend to be a good size like a good height mm -hmm. um for yarn and they sell nice ones with like wheels on them so you can roll them in and out um it keeps everything nice and clean and it also doesn't interfere with you know any of your storage or shelving in other locations in your yeah, house absolutely where do you because i know selena um whenever we chat yeah you've got some yarn displayed so you store some of your yarn as well so what are your primary storage locations and containers look like yeah so um i'm trying very hard to be a minimalist and not have excess which I'm rubbing off on her. Hard sometimes it really can be, you know, because you see yarn on sale and some. Uh, oh yeah, and things just happen. Um, so I try not to hoard yarn. I'm trying very hard not to hoard yarn. So I don't really want to be in the habit of storing yarn that I have no real um, agenda for. Yeah. So currently, I am working on a very large project. I'm working on specifically 25 large projects. <laughs> and so I do have yarn for all of those projects stored in plastic bins, out of sunlight. Um, those are in my closet right next to my office because I want them to be new and fresh and out of sunlight, and, you know, ready to go when I, when I have them ready. Um, and then I do have yarn that I display that maybe I'll use one day, maybe I, I won't. But you can yeah. see I have these really pretty cakes up here. I I don't know. Maybe I'll use it. Maybe I won't. I do. Actually, I'm going to use this new one right here. So I have that in arm's reach because that's next. Yeah. Typically, I'm just like, ooh, it's pretty. Like, I'm just going to put it here. I'm not going to really touch it. Um, so, yeah, I try really hard not to store yarn that I have no intention of using or no clear agenda for. I love that. And yeah. And then I do have yarn that I just have out because it's beautiful and it inspires me. And then whatever is next, like that's what I'm using next. Like I'll have it right. Yeah. Like kind of like in <laughs> assembly line, you know, I can see it. It's right there. Like I'm already thinking about what it's going to be and stuff like that. So that's what I do. That's my, that's my process. I like it. Yeah. Well, the last thing that I want to talk about in the storage realm is something that can help uh, specifically if you have it in multi if you're storing in multiple locations, um, if your stash is larger, but even if it's smaller, this might be something that you want to consider doing. Um, keep some sort of inventory log. Yeah. And you don't have to go super crazy with this, like not down to the yard. Like I know some people who like keep track of like literally how many yards they have left in, in ounces or whatever. And you don't have to do it that way. You can if you find it helpful. Um, but either use Ravelry or a spreadsheet or even a notebook of some kind to kind of track what you have going on mm -hmm. when you put it away. And then whenever you go in to take something out, make a note of that and make sure, you know, if you're, if you're using Ravelry, which is great because they have that stash feature, you can immediately link, you know, uh, that you're using some of your stash yarn when you start a new Ravelry project. Like that's really great. So you don't have to manually sort of make any adjustments to your stash. It, it keeps track of that for you. Mm -hmm. um, you can do the same thing if you wanted to on a spreadsheet or again in a notebook kind of thing. Um, I know that when I had all of my stuff, when I was first starting, like in a trunk, I literally had to empty that thing pretty much every time I wanted something because I always seemed to want whatever was on the bottom, first of all. Um, and I often, because I was going digging in it all the time and then kind of reassembling it, I would go to the store and wind up buying things that I actually already had. Yes. 
exactly. And I've yeah. done that more than once. So that's why when you said keep an inventory log, like we think, oh, what a pain. But I can't tell you how many times I have bought the same yarn and I take it home and I'm like, oh, I already had four skeins of that. Yep. I'm glad I bought it. It happens all the time. Yeah. All the time when I had it in the trunk. Not so much when I had it on the yarn wall because I could see everything very clearly. Um, but yeah, it happened all the time and it was such a waste because then I'd have all of this stuff that I didn't need because yeah. I wasn't even using the stuff that I already had, right. <laughs> you I know? know? So that's another one of the reasons why I kind of downsized my stash and I only kept the stuff that really made me excited and inspired and um, all of those things. Uh, so yes, if you have if you have a larger inventory, even if you have a smaller inventory, but specifically if you're storing it, really keep an inventory log decide where you want to do that but try to do that because you'll you'll find it'll be less stressful when you go to use it less stressful when you're looking for something yep. if you're storing things in multiple locations keep note of where it is like this one's under the bed and that one's in the closet and so that when you go to look for something you know exactly where it is and you don't spend like 20 minutes you know digging through stuff and completely you know messing up your entire stash and then having to you know, reorganize all over yeah, again. <laughs> absolutely. Or put a inventory sheet on the outside of your container and that yeah. will, and just kind of keep a revolving update of what you take out or what you what you put in. That could yeah, help. I think that's a great idea too, actually. I like that. Well, I think that if anyone has ever worked in a store where there was inventory, like you may already think in that capacity. Like I remember working at a uh, at an arts and crafts store and we did have inventory. So like I might have, my brain might have operated that way before, but yeah, yeah. After I worked there, I was like, oh man, that makes perfect sense because, oh, I'm totally out of this color, but I keep buying this color and I don't need it. Right. So it's just little things like that that just kind of like help make your yarn life better. Oh my God. That was what got me. I would go to the store and I'd see a yarn in a pretty color. And I'd be like, oh my God, that color is so pretty. And I'd buy like, like two or three skeins. And then I'd go back to the store like three weeks later and be like, oh my God, that color is so pretty. <laughs> I do the same <laughs> and it'd be the same thing, the same yarn. You know, I'll, I'm going to add one more note to your list, Jess. And this is something yeah. I am so guilty of. And it's one of the reasons I was like, man, I'm just going to be a minimalist. This is ridiculous. So Joann's and Michael's, I love you guys, but still at the same time, you guys stress me out. Because you're like, you know what? I'm just going to look. I got this awesome coupon. And you go to the yeah. store and you've got the awesome coupon. And that's what you do. Ooh, I'm totally buying all this yarn. And you don't need it. You bought it on an impulse. And so you keep it in the bag. And then you take the bag and you put it, I'm going to, you know, deal with this later. And then the same thing, like you don't put it away. You don't immediately make, you know, keep up with your inventory. Yeah. So what do you do? Maybe you already have that yarn. Or next time there's a sale or something, you do the same thing. I literally found this is how bad it was, Jess. Like I needed an intervention. I had, <laughs> that. I had like 15 skeins of yarn, skeins and cakes of yarn. Yeah. In like two different bags in my closet. When I was cleaning up my closet, I was like ashamed. Like, oh, I, man. Had, I forgot I even got this yarn. So it's like not yeah, hidden them money. back there. Cause yeah. you knew. Not only did I spend all that money, but I was saving a bunch of money, you know, but not only yeah. did I spend all that money. Now I'm just, I had no, I had nowhere to put it. Like I had no agenda for it. It stayed in the bed. Like months went by, Jess. And you clearly months. didn't need it because you totally forgot about it. <laughs> totally forgot about it. So I was seriously like, what's in these bags? Because sometimes like I have so many whips, so yeah. many that sometimes like I use up all of my nice whip bags and then I just use grocery bags. Like, right, that's right. how many I have. And so at first I was like, man, do I have like more whips than I thought? And I opened it up. I was like, oh no, it's, it's yarn. Yep. Oh, wow. Darn. And shame on me. <laughs> oh, snap. The good tips, people. Jess has got good tips for you. All right. So we're going to move into, we talked about storage. Yep. Uh, we're going to move into display ideas. But before we do, I want to read a few of the comments that people are leaving. Yes. Um, Linda's here. Tina's here. Wanda's here. Hey, guys. Um, Tina says she has her yarn in clear totes and some on plastic shelves. So that's awesome. Um, Linda says she has some yarn on shelves, um, usually if they're still in plastic wrappers. Um, 
some in large plastic crates, some in big totes, and some in plastic baskets for easy access. Yes. She said, but it basically needs a good sort out. Yeah. I one of my favorite activities was taking down the yarn wall Aww. and putting it back up. Don't ask oh, me why. And putting it back up. I yeah. Gonna end there. No, yeah. Taking it down and putting it back to like reorganizing. I don't know. Just, oh I'm, no. I'm Oh I'm a nerd. Let's let's be. No, honest. I get you're in good company. Uh, no, <laughs> that's seriously some of my favorite activities are not only rearranging my yarn, like to see what do I have. I have these yeah. bags, but then I also love taking partial skeins and caking them. Ooh, yeah, that is that is very satisfying. So satisfying, very satisfying. Um, but yeah, Tina says everyone laughs at my stash until they want or need something, right, mm -hmm. Tina? Mm -hmm. tell them. Who's laughing, huh, Tina? Yeah, who's laughing now? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay, so we're gonna move on to display ideas. Yep. Um, are you gonna share your screen, right? So yeah. Now? Okay. Yeah. Cool. So storage, they were great tips to kind of go through because you know we can understand those concepts. But for storage, I mean, we've Jess and I have curated some pretty awesome, visually inspiring ideas. So I'm gonna share my screen, and we're gonna walk through them. Yay. Yay. This is my favorite. I don't have any yarn displayed right now, but like this is my favorite and I actually might put some out after this. Ooh. All right. So yarn yeah. display. Jess, do you want to go through some of the specific ideas that we had and I can show some of the specific um, yeah. examples for each? Yeah. So when we're talking about display, just to clarify, we're talking about displaying maybe partial units of yarn or units that you might not intend to use just like to look at, um, or yarn that you will use quickly. So like Selena was talking about stuff that she has within arm's reach. Mm -hmm. um, you know, those are the kinds of things that we're talking about here. So idea number one is glass jars. Um, I actually used to do this with my scraps and I love this because it's so color. One of the reasons I love yarn is because it's so colorful and pretty to look at. And I think a lot of us kind of feel the same way. So glass jars are awesome because they can display them and protect them at the same time. It's great for scraps and leftover bits that you don't want to get rid of. Maybe you have a scrap yarn project that you're saving them for. Um, that's what glass jars are really great for. Um, next up, we have the like a uh, rolling cart. Oh, so popular! Um, I am so yeah. Much. This. Um, they have them at Ikea. They have them at Michael's now too. Um, That's right. I love this look. I think it's fantastic. The carts themselves are super cute. And then once you fill them with yarn, they're like even more amazing and adorable. Mm -hmm. um, you can also store supplies on here. You can store whips on here. So it's a great, like this to me is the ultimate in like couch side yarn display and supply storage um, mm -hmm. because I can't tell you how many times I've been downstairs in front of the TV working on a project and I can't find my scissors or my yarn needle or whatever. Um, so this is like that ultimate kind of mix of both storage of the yarn itself and um, you know, storage of necessary supplies and maybe you keep your hooks and, and whatever or your needles on there. Um, plus they come in super cute colors um, and you can always repaint, you know, if you right. wanted, wanted something specific. Um, next up we have stuff that goes on the wall. So shelves, oh, um, so baskets. Easy. Yeah, these are, obviously I used to have the yarn wall. Uh, I've seen some super creative, like those are awesome, the zigzag mm -hmm. shelves. Um, because yarn is soft and squishy, there are pretty much as long as it fits, it sits, right? So oh, like a cat. <laughs> just like a cat, you know, you could use really oddly shaped shelves or baskets because, um, because the yarn will just kind of conform. That's a really cool idea too, the whole shoe storage yes. or yes. the back. That's a good idea. Um, you know, so anything on the wall is a great place to display it. It becomes like a piece of art. Um, I love those hexagon shelves. I'm totally getting some of these. Those are amazing. Aren't they? 
I love how they're different depths too. Oh, like I just some of them are that. deep, or deeper. Like, yeah. yeah, gives it lots of dimension. And something like that is kind of cool because it's broken up into smaller pieces, which means that you can then further organize, um, you know, by color or by brand or something like that, and kind of both display and still keep it organized at the same mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I'm still Super. hitting as we're sitting here because there's just so many yeah. <laughs> amazing like wall storage idea. Like it's just never ending people. It's just never. And ending. I just want to point out that this is our, uh, this is the yarn life Pinterest account. So if yes. you guys are interested in any of these things, you want to follow what we have going on. You can find us on Pinterest at yarn life. Yep. Um, and you can follow like, these boards. Okay. Yep, link is in the show notes. Yeah, yeah, the link is in the show notes. Selena pins stuff all the time. Um, all right, so next up, we have we have some fun stuff. So things that you maybe maybe would normally use in your kitchen um, could make really cute yarn storage. Yep. Um, fruit stands, those stacking bowls, things in tiers mm -hmm. that again would do great for either smaller skeins or scrap yarn or just a really cute way to display a bunch of you know kind of odds and ends um so those are super cute to have around if you want to create an accent on a table um or something like that uh that's kind of an alternative because i know a lot of us don't display don't have opportunities to display yarn in kind of like a table setting Usually right. it's either on the wall or, you know, something like that, either that rolling cart, you know, so this is like a cute accent piece for your kitchen table. <laughs> <Just kidding. Right. laughs> or like, um, like I said, maybe like you just need different, um, you know, display ideas. Maybe you only have so much yeah. wall space or maybe you only have wall space. So these are all clever ideas, no matter what kind of solution you're looking for. Yeah. I love that one. I think that's one of my favorites. Um, if you have like a big bowl, I know um, I used to have this big like wooden bowl. Yes. That was just like huge and it looked super cool with a bunch of yarn like thrown in it. So those are kinds of things that maybe they look like kitchen items, but you can repurpose them for yarn. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, next up, we have those cool accordion like hat rack things. Mm -hmm. Um and yeah, there we go. So that's kind of, I mean, that's basically what I did with the yarn wall, just kind of in a pre-made smaller setting. Mm -hmm. So you can get these, you know, on Amazon or Walmart or wherever. Um, and the, the pegs that you would normally put your hat on um, or whatever the rack is actually made for, um, you can mount that on your wall and then stick your yarn on it. And again, it's a cool way to display. You can kind of create a pattern with the colors. Um, you can use it to hang on to some scraps that you're not sure what you want to do with yet. Um, those little skeins that kind of get lost in bigger storage or stuff like that, because they'll just slip between, between the cracks. Mm -hmm. Um, that's a great place to these uh, accordion racks are a great place to put those. Absolutely. Um, and then last up, we have a variation on that, which is exactly what uh, my yarn wall was made out of um, is pegboard. Mm -hmm. So you can get this, you know, at Lowe's or Home Depot, they're actually super cheap. Um, you can get all sorts of accessories to, um, you know, put in the pegs. Mm -hmm. holes. That way, again, it's another kind of multifaceted display slash storage solution because you can put your yarn on there, you can hang baskets or other little, I used to hang um, little metal like pails that I got at Michael's. Oh um, yeah. And I'd put, kind of see. yep. Yeah, exactly. So I'd put like my crochet hooks and stuff in there. So you always have some supplies handy. Um, and everyone asks me if it gets dusty. So the, this is something that we can talk about when we're talking about display in general. Um, your yarn might get dusty, but it's yarn. So you could take it down. Well, this is what I used to do. I used to take it down. I would uh, like literally take my hand on top and just kind of flick it around. Yep. And then it wasn't dusty anymore. Like that was it. 
Um, so it's it's not super um, time intensive to keep it clean. If the skeins are packed super tight, the only ones that will even ever maybe be an issue are the ones that are on the top um, because all the other ones are being protected by the ones that are on the top. So these are some really cool display ideas that vary from stuff you can put on your wall to stuff that you can roll around with you as you work um, to containers and bowls and tiered uh, fun stuff that you can put on your counters or your tables. Um, you can also kind of use it as storage. There's those glass containers, with the holes in the top mm -hmm. that you can use as you're using your yarn. Uh, you can pull from the top so that it both keeps your yarn clean and neat um, and looks really cute while you're using it. Um, so there's tons of ideas. I know Selena has been sharing and kind of clicking around as I've been talking, but there's plenty of stuff on there that she didn't actually click through. So right. if you guys don't follow us on Pinterest, um, I know uh, Linda said, she said, I was just having a look through your Pinterest boards a few days ago. Mm -hmm. So that's awesome. I'm glad Linda has been using them. Yeah. So if you guys don't follow us on Pinterest, uh, find us in, you know, the link is in the show notes. Um, or you could probably just search Yarn Life, I think, and you'd be able to find us. Um, let's see. I, people have been commenting while I, while we were talking about display, so I want to go back. Simone says she keeps mine. I, I keep mine in airtight under bed storage, except my bed is too low, so they are stacked next to my bookcase. <laughs> yeah, that was my problem for the longest time. I had a bed that my dad had made me, so there was no under bed storage. Mm -hmm. It was all just one big platform bed. Um, Linda says they have those carts in Hobbycraft in the UK. Yeah, that's a good note um, for those of you who are in the UK. Um, those rolling carts, I love those. I've been so tempted to buy one of those because I think they're adorable. Um, I have three. You do? Oh, I'm jealous. I might have to go, I have a 50% off Michael's coupon which is really bad, but yeah, <laughs> I might have to grab one. Um, Wanda says big glass vases from thrift stores to throw all those yarn balls in. easy to see when you need a little bit. Yeah. I used to use a glass vase for my scraps and I loved it because it looked so fun and colorful and cause you could obviously see through it and you could see all the, the big balls and little balls. And then you could, when you wanted something, you could very easily see what you wanted to grab it out. Um, and Simone says, just smack it against the wall a few times. She's yeah. talking about getting, getting the dust off the skeins. Yeah, exactly. It's not a big deal. You just got to kind of like brush it off and that's it. That's um, true. I love displaying yarn. And I think after this discussion, I'm going to have to pull out a few skeins from my, from my box and find, find a good spot. <laughs> find a good spot to put You've some. Been inspired. The Yarn Life Show has inspired you. I have. I'm very inspired right now. Awesome. And it's all thanks to you, Selena. Well, I want to remind everyone that if you are enjoying this episode, if you have some clever storage ideas, if you guys want to share what you do to store or display your yarn, please come on over to our Facebook group and share those pictures there. Or if yeah. you have a blog or if you're on Instagram or something, if you want to share them so that we can repin them to our Yarn Life Show Pinterest boards, we would love to do that. So definitely keep us posted. Yes. Awesome. All right. All right. So that's it. I think we've exhausted our display and store yarn chat. And now that you guys have some ideas about how you can store or display your yarn, Remember, check out our Pinterest boards for even more rela yarn related ideas from storage and display to yarn arts, patterns, tutorials, and so much more. And you can find the link to our Pinterest boards in our sh uh, show notes today. Awesome. Yep. That's right. Well, let's see. I think um, I want to thank Simone and Linda and Wanda and Tina and everyone else who was watching live. If you're watching us on the replay, make sure you comment with how you store your yarn or any maybe tips that you have for storing and displaying your yarn. And uh, you can also, like Selena said, come on over to the Facebook group too. Yeah, absolutely.
And with that, I think this concludes today's episode. We'd love to hear what you think. So let us know here or in the Yarn Live Show a Facebook group. And please join us again here next week for episode 10 of 10. Next week is our last episode in uh, season two of the Yarn Life Show. Uh, and we're going to outline another great topic for everyone who enjoys the Yarn Life. So make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss it. Awesome. Remember, today's episode is sponsored in part by you awesome people. Please check out our Yarn Life swag shop to pick up a token, tea, tote, or mug today. Mm -hmm. Every purchase you make there helps us to create more great content, more episodes, and bring on even more amazing guests. You can find our shop link in the show notes section today. That's right. Thanks again for joining this episode of the Yarn Life Show for your daily dose of fiber. We'll see you again next time. Peace, guys. Bye, guys.